Before using any equipment, you must first refer to the manufacturer's instructions for proper use, maintenance and inspection of the equipment. Equipment must be inspected before each shift at a minimum. If the inspection reveals defects or damage beyond what is acceptable by the manufacturer's instructions or applicable legislation, it must be removed from service to be disposed of or repaired by qualified people. If the person doing the inspection is not yet competent in the inspection process, then a competent designated person needs to supervise the inspection. Makeshift rigging components are not permitted. All rigging components that carry any portion of a load must be commercially manufactured. These components are engineered and certified to comply with various standards. If you find any equipment that is in a condition that will compromise the health or safety of workers using or transporting it, you must immediately report it to your employer. This includes any equipment that will not perform the function for which it is intended, or for which it was designed, or is not strong enough for its purpose, or if it has an obvious defect. Workers involved in hoisting and rigging must exercise care when selecting and using slings. The selection of slings should be based on the size and type of the load, sling configuration and the environmental conditions of the workplace. Improper use of slings may result in damage from overloading, excessive speed or sudden acceleration or deceleration of equipment. Such damage can be caused by taking up slack with a sudden jerk or shock loading. Slings can be categorized in three main groups, which include chain slings, wire rope slings, and web slings. Each type has its own particular advantages and disadvantages. Factors to consider when choosing the best sling for the job include the size, weight, and shape of the load, the temperature and sensitivity of the material being moved, and the temperature and environmental conditions under which the sling will be used. Care should be taken when using chain slings because sudden shock loads can cause damage. Some advantages of chain slings include their strength, their resistance to the effects of UV light and hot temperatures, and their ability to withstand overall abuse from workers. Their biggest disadvantage is that the chain is only as strong as its weakest link, and they can fail without warning if used incorrectly. Chain slings must be visually inspected prior to use. During the inspection, Pay particular attention to any link elongation, bends, twists, heat damage, nicks, gouges, and wear in excess of the allowances made by the manufacturer. These signs indicate that the sling may be unsafe and must be removed from service immediately, as it may break suddenly without warning. For this reason, some sites do not allow chains for hoisting, so you must know your site-specific rules and regulations. When chains are used for adjusting the load, Backup slings may be required as a site standard. Wire rope slings have great strength combined with flexibility. They don't wear as rapidly as other slings and their true condition is shown by the presence of broken wires. When selecting a wire rope sling to give the best service, there are four characteristics to consider. Its strength, its ability to withstand fatigue, for example, its ability to bend without distortion, its ability to withstand abrasive wear, and its ability to withstand abuse. Wire rope is composed of individual wires that have been twisted to form strands. Strands are then twisted to form a wire rope. When wire rope has a fiber core, it is usually more flexible, but less resistant to environmental and heat damage. Wire rope with a core that is made of wire rope strand tends to have greater strength and is more resistant to environmental and heat damage. The term rope lay signifies the direction of rotation of the wire and the strand. Rotation is either to the right, being clockwise, or to the left, being counterclockwise. The lay length is the distance measured along the rope in which a strand makes one complete revolution around the axis. In regular lay rope, the strands rotate in the direction opposite to which the wires rotate. This is to counteract the torque in the rope and reduce the tendency of unwinding under load. Most wire rope used is right lay, regular lay. This type has the widest range of applications and meets the requirements of most equipment. As you can see in the illustration, with regular lay rope, the wires appear to be running horizontally. In Langley rope, 
the strands rotate in the same direction as the wires. The wires appear to run diagonally. These ropes are used in special applications where torque would cause the line to twist in one direction. Langley rope is 20% weaker than regular lay rope. Wire rope and chain slings must be protected with softeners or blocking when used at corners or sharp bends. The length of the arc of the softener must contact the rope for at least one rope lay. Not doing so is the most common cause of damage to wire rope. Inspect wire rope for kinks broken wires, abrasion, crushed strands, corrosion, electric arc, metal fatigue, diameter reduction, wire rope stretch, scrubbing, and exposed bulging core. The ropes illustrated here show the severe damage that results when kinked ropes are used. Local wear, distortion, misplaced wires, and early failure are inevitable. Bird caging may be caused by a sudden release of tension and resultant rebound of rope from overloaded conditions. One of the biggest concerns with distortion in the shape of the wire rope slings is that the wires are no longer carrying an equal share of the load. Wire ropes must be removed from service if wear or corrosion affects individual wires over more than one third of the original diameter of the rope. There is evidence that the rope structure is distorted because of bulging, kinking, stretching, bird caging, or any other form of damage. They must also be removed from service if the normal rope diameter is reduced from any cause by more than 0.4 millimeters if the normal diameter is eight millimeters or less, one millimeter if the normal diameter is more than eight millimeters and less than 20 millimeters, two millimeters if the normal diameter is 20 millimeters or more to less than 30 millimeters and three millimeters if the normal diameter is 30 millimeters or more. Running ropes are ropes that run over a sheave or a drum. Running wire ropes must be removed from service if six or more randomly distributed wires are broken in one rope lay, or if three or more wires are broken in one strand in one rope lay.